The American National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that Iran was allegedly preparing to transfer several hundred drones to Russia. The Iranian government is preparing to provide Russia with up to several hundred UAVs, including weapons-capable UAVs, on an expedi expedited timeline. Our in information further indicates that Iran is preparing to train Russian forces to use these UAVs, with initial training sessions slated to begin as soon as early July. Neither the Russians nor the Iranians have officially confirmed information about the supply of Iranian drones to Russia, but the mainstream media is plastering this info everywhere. Remember folks, the United States is the Dajjal system, the system of the Antichrist. It lies. This unproven statement about the transfer of armed drones is certainly connected to the upcoming trip of the American president to the Middle East. <laughs> As you guys are fully aware, senile Biden plans to visit Saudi Arabia, which historically has had a very bad relationship with Iran. And the American president will try, amongst many other things, to negotiate with the Saudis on the supply of oil, increasing its production and resolving the fuel crisis in the West. Because that's what the Saudis are good for, right? Oil and lots of it. The statements about Iranian drones are an attempt by America to show Saudi Arabia that they're not ready to cooperate with Iran now since it's going to supply drones to the boogeyman Vladimir Putin. However, the bottom line remains, America will use this information as a leverage with Saudi Arabia, regardless of whether the information about Iran's cooperation with Russia is confirmed or not. The Americans are waiting for concessions from the Persian Gulf monarchies to increase oil production. However, according to a number of Arab sources, Saudi Arabia's position is clear. Oil prices will not be reduced. The Saudis need all the oil money they can get their grubby hands on for their vision 2030 and building their futuristic city, Neom. And why not? The Americans think they're clever with their statements. At one time they were, they fooled a lot of people when they told us Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. But today times have changed. What the Americans are playing here is quite simple. The Saudis don't like the Iranians. And if the Iranians supply Russia with drones for the operation in Ukraine, then automatically Russia also becomes the enemy of Saudi Arabia. The Americans are counting on Saudi Arabia to take an appropriate position on the special operations in Ukraine, but I highly doubt that will be achieved. Even if the Americans decide to supply more weapons to the Saudis, I don't think the Saudis will drop their oil prices. I could be wrong though. I don't think Crown Prince Mohammed bin Al Salman Al Saud is that stupid. And I think he will be convinced that Biden can no longer be trusted nor respected. Saudi Arabia as it is today no longer sees the US president as sovereign. That's why the Americans are trying to somehow lure the Saudis to their side. Sure, President Vladimir Putin of Russia is visiting Tehran and so is Erdogan and Putin may decide to conclude a weapons deal with Iran, could happen, might include Iranian drones, not saying it will not. But the main reason why Putin is visiting Iran, and bear in mind this is his second trip since the start of the special operations in Ukraine, is because of Syria. All parties want to settle the man-made conflict out there. Anyway, I really do wish Joe Biden the best of luck with his upcoming trip to Saudi Arabia. I'm paying too much to drive my car these days and could really do with the price of petrol being lowered. But I highly doubt the Saudis are going to budge with this. If the American president manages to leave the country without disgrace, this will be a major achievement for American diplomacy. Let's not forget, the Russians are not enemies of Saudi Arabia and will never be, and have never promised the Saudis to put pressure on Iran, unlike the US, who's forever going on about maximum pressure on Iran to take advantage of the Middle East. عنصريته وحقده الدفين على كل من ليس مثله 
هذا الكلام لا ينطبق فقط على المسلمين ولا ينطبق فقط على العرب كما نعتقد لا ينطبق على الجميع الحقد الذي رأيناه على روسيا اليوم لم نراه على أي دولة في التاريخ ولكن هذا الحقد ليس جديد هذا الحقد عمره قرون تجاه روسيا وتجاه الآخرين أحد الأمثلة الهامة في الحرب العالمية الثانية كان الغرب سعيد جدا بدخول هتلر إلى روسيا ولا أحد يتحدث عن أكثر من 26 مليون ضحية في روسيا ولم يكن لديهم أي مشكلة معه ولم يحاولوا القيام بأي هجوم ضدهم وإنما قاموا بذلك عندما بدأ يخسر وفي المراحل النهائية من الحرب العالمية لكي لا تتمكن روسيا من أن تخطف هذا النصر كما كان يفكر الغرب فقاموا بإنزال النورماندي وأثبت الغرب أنه لا يوجد لديه لا أصدقاء ولا يوجد لديه أعداء يوجد لديه عدو واحد هو كل من يقف في وجه مصالحه المادية فيعني لا الشيوعية ولا الإسلام ولا النازية ولا الصين ولا روسيا ولا غيرها هم أعداء للغرب إذا كانوا يلبوا المصالح فهم أصدقاء إذا كانوا يقفوا ضد المصالح فهم أعداء يعني المبادئ